Hey, Greg here, founder of Wrestling-Divas.Webs.com, dedicated to highlighting the most beautiful and deadly entertainers in professional wrestling. Trained by the likes of Les Thatcher and former WWE superstar Jimmy Yang, my next special guest can be seen as a member of the Ring of Honor Women's Division. I'd like to welcome my next special guest, the former Mary Elizabeth Monroe, now turned Kelly Klein. Hello. Hi, Kelly. How are you today? Thanks for joining me. I'm absolutely. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> I was doing a lot of research about you, and um, we'll get over the start of your career in just a bit. But we do need to talk about the recent, or semi-recent, I should say, transformation that you've undertaken in your career. You started out as Mary Elizabeth Monroe, excuse me, and um, you've recently turned into Kelly Klein. And I have to say, off the bat, you cannot pay me enough money to face you in the ring as Kelly Klein. (laughs) I mean, your persona scares me half to death, and props to you for uh, doing that transformation. Can you explain to our viewers why you decided to make that transition in your career? Because it can be quite risky going from one persona to a completely new persona. I mean, sometimes the risks don't pay off. So uh, can you explain to us what uh, that process was like for you? Well, I've wanted for years to go back um, to using my real name. And uh, I tried it a couple of times over my, you know, entire time in wrestling. And it it just, it never... um, I never really had the opportunity, partly, and I I had one one time where I was kind of starting to do it, and then um, just some things didn't kind of pan out as as I was just trying to get the momentum for it. So I I had the opportunity when I was starting with Ring of Honor, where I could make a transition, and I knew that I wanted to be more myself, be just be true to myself, use my name, um, and just really um, kind of feel feel more comfortable like I was being more natural. And there are a lot of aspects of how I presented myself as Mary Elizabeth Monroe that, that are, they're all true to me and none of that was contrived, but it was also... Uh, not one-dimensional, but not quite as multifaceted as who I am. And I was, I was feeling like I was having to kind of shield some of the other parts of me where um, I can be, I'm, I'm extremely competitive and aggressive and determined. And that was, that was something that I was feeling like I um, was missing. So when I, when I had the opportunity to start with Ring of Honor, I, I knew that was, a time where I could make a transition. I was going to be um, kind of using the uh, sort of a, a different presentation of myself. And that also to me made sense that, hey, if I'm going to be presenting myself more this way and focusing more on these traits and characteristics, then this is a good time to change my name. I'll be being introduced to a new audience um, so I can change to my real name. And I knew that if I didn't do it at that time, there was never going to be another opportunity, and I was just never going to be able to do it. So um, I I asked if, if I would be able to do that and use my real name. Um, I, I kind of explained my reasons, including the fact that I I just didn't feel like the the way I was going to be presenting myself really gelled with the name Mary Elizabeth Monroe. That was just to me. I was like, you know, she's she's kind of like this other other person like me in another life. And mm-hmm. I I wasn't worried about it really because I I just knew in my heart that it was true to myself, that it was the right thing to do. And um I, I even had the kind of the only not not opposition, um really in more of a supportive way. Uh, the people at Ring of Honor were telling me, well, we weren't going to make you change your name because we recognize and appreciate how long you've worked to cultivate the name and the um, the fan base. And 
and talking to some other of my mentors, um, you know, it was kind of decided that, hey, your, your fans are going to follow you and they're going to they're gonna catch on, they're going to come on board, and then all your new fans are going to know you as, as your real name, how you want to be known. And uh, my real name is something that nobody can ever take away from me, and that's, that was also something that was very important to me, just um, not only personally but also in a business sense that um, it was something that no one can take away. Uh, I also had some encouragement from Maria Canellis because she, she was talking to me about when you go to different companies and change your name and have all these different names, at some point uh, there's your real name and there's this wrestling name and that wrestling name, and, and it's confusing. And the more mm-hmm. you can just use your real name, the, the less that's happening. So really, um, except for when I worked for one company that just gave me a different last name for a while, um, I even then, I've always been either Mary Elizabeth or Kelly. So um, now even like my other wrestling name is my real name. So that just reduces kind of, I guess, that confusion for me and, and also just gives me ownership. And that's something that um, I really just, I always feel like I'm being myself and I don't ever feel like I'm in the wrestling arena or in my real life or if there's crossover or blend that that's ever confusing or an issue uh, because I'm, I'm always just me. Hmm. So it sounds like there was a lot of uh, trial and error with uh, this transformation. And, uh, you know, for fans who are unfamiliar of your work, I mean, this whole change in persona, yes, it was more you from what it was before when you were married to Elizabeth Monroe. You know, it wasn't this sort of just, I'm going to change my attire or I'm just going to change one aspect. It was just like this complete transformation. So as far as people in the industry, performers, or maybe even uh, promoters looking to change their brand and take that next step to elevate their career, what would you give them as far as advice in order to embrace well, this change? Because well, it can be um, it can be risky. I wouldn't say trial and error. Um, I don't think that that was really the case at all. Um, and part of that was because it was well thought out and – if somebody feels strongly about making a change, you just have to completely commit. When you don't commit to something, that's when things will fizzle out. And I think people have seen that in, in a lot of aspects of, um, of wrestling in particular, where if a character is introduced and then they're not really uh, supported or there's no follow through, then it fizzles out. So, whatever you want to do, you have to just really have, have an idea, have a, a firm idea to start with. It doesn't mean it can't evolve, but you have to have a plan. You have to have a focus and um, just keep that focus and kind of have that, that plan of where it's going. And then you just have to commit if you sort of halfway do it and um, don't, don't follow through, then it won't, that's, that's when it won't work. And it's not that the idea wasn't good. It's that it didn't it didn't have the support and the legs. And part of that with um, and maybe with trial and error you were talking about when I had tried to do before. Um, and that wasn't really trial and error. That was just that I didn't stand up to the promoters I was working for and say, "Hey, this is what I'm doing." So uh, when I had somebody be like, "Oh, well, I don't know," then I I kind of backed off a little bit. Um, and I really should have taken more ownership of it at the time. But when I did make this transition, um, I had that experience to kind of look back on and know that, no, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. This is why it makes sense, why it's smart, why it's better for everybody. And this, this, is, what I, this is what I want. So when I was able to present it with confidence, then I was told, oh, okay, okay, let me think about that. And then, you know, come, they come back and said, okay, let's do it. And, um, and, and because I had thought about it and planned it, any questions and concerns that were brought up, I had answers for. So when they said, well, you've built your fan base, you know, how, how will you take care of this? Or how will you explain the name change? And I, and I had the answers. So it was really easy just to answer the questions. And then they said, oh, okay, we can do that. 
So I was doing um, a lot of research about you and uh, watching a lot of your matches beforehand uh, as your, uh, I, I don't want to call it new persona, but fully great embraced persona as it is now. And one thing that I really took away from your character is that she's like really like a female Terminator. I mean, even when she's getting hit, she doesn't seem to get phased by anything. That's why the character scares me half to death, to be honest. <laughs> so props to you for the portrayal. Um, as far as when I mean, you I wouldn't I now, wouldn't even say character or portrayal because this is truly um, this is me. If you if you would see me in wrestling training, there are plenty of examples of. Um, you know, say I'm I'm working on a drill with somebody and we collide the wrong way and this is this has happened more than once <laughs> and I pop up and I'm ready to go and then the other guy is, is laying there like holding his head or this or that and and the trainer says, Well well what happened to you? Did you hit your head on, on her knee? And I and I said, No, we, we banged heads and the trainer goes, Well why why is he sitting on the ground and you're up? And it's just, you know, just uh, <laughs> I'm fine, you know, I shake it off, I move on. And that's um, that's how I've been in, in my whole life. I'm competitive. I'm uh, I, I'm focused when there's something I care about. Uh, when I'm trying to push myself and challenge myself, I I even recently was coaching softball, um, and I was I was working with the girls and some stuff, and I got nailed really actually pretty hard in the kneecap with a pitch. Um, I also got in the same day um, hit with a, a ball in the jaw that kind of had bounced Ooh. up. And, um, you know, I just can't, you know, shake it off. I'm like, okay, come on. And nothing's broken. Nothing's bleeding. I'm fine. So that's just, that's just me. And that's why um, this is something that feels, feels right and feels more natural because it, I'm not trying to figure out what to do. I'm just doing what, what I would do. It doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. Pain is just information it's your your nerves sending information to your brain and then you figure out is this something i should be concerned about and that's that's exactly i'm just portraying me and that's what i do it's is this is this something that i should be concerned about is this something that's going to stop me right now is this something i can deal with later is this something that is more important than what my goal is right now, whether it's to win the match, to win the game, to make the play, to um, finish the workout, to finish the training, to gain this knowledge, whatever it is, is this something that's going to stop me or can I deal with this later? And most of the time it's like, you know what, I can deal with this later. Your brain will always quit before your body will. Your mind will always give up before your body will. So that's a choice and that's a decision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I agree. Um, going to the beginning of your career, because I want to say you've been in this industry uh, close to a decade at this point. Um, yes. So what was the defining moment in your life, uh, maybe stemming from childhood or, or watching wrestling when you were a, a teenager? What was that moment that you said to yourself, hey, I'm going to pursue this and I'm not just going to be a fan anymore? Because there's just the moment where it just clicks and you know that this is what you're going to do. It was the first time I saw wrestling. I didn't, I didn't ever have a moment where I was like, oh, I'm going to be a fan. I did not grow up watch, watching wrestling. I wasn't allowed. I grew up around amateur Greco-Roman wrestling, which is why um, a lot of sometimes the way I like to move and um, the way that I like to work with my opponents often sort of stems from some of that. But I didn't grow up watching professional wrestling. I wasn't allowed. It wasn't allowed in my house. I just I didn't see it. I wasn't exposed to it at all. So when I first went to an independent wrestling show, it was literally it was a favor to a friend. I had invited to see my rock band perform, and he said, "Okay, I'll come see your band. Get your band. Come see me wrestle." I thought, "Okay, what the heck? That sounds just crazy enough." Um, I was intrigued. I went to a, a live event at Heartland Wrestling Association, and before I, I think the show wasn't even halfway through, I was saying to my friends, I want to do this. I need to find out where I can train. So I never even had a moment where I was like, oh, I want to come back and watch more of this. It was never that. It was, okay, how do I get in that ring? That was immediate. So you... Um obviously having 
no prior kind of knowledge of, of wrestling other than probably knowing what it is because uh, wrestling is uh, very much so involved in culture. And even if you don't watch it, you have some idea of what it is. When you were in that training uh, process and starting to get yourself out there, how how did going through that work change your perception of the industry and what you would be in for moving forward with your career? Because I always hear that it's always much harder to go through with it than you think, no matter how much preparation you do. Um, I don't know that it was really that it was harder than I thought. It was it's different than anything else. Um, I was used to in um, other other aspects of my life, whether it be uh, dance, horseback riding, softball, um, whatever I was doing, I was used to pushing and working hard. So it was just a matter of what I was doing. And um, probably actually the hardest part was the mental aspect because the the physical stuff, I, I know what it is to push yourself till you throw up and, you know, run and run and run until you, you, your lungs are screaming. Um, I know what that is. I know what it is um, to, to pitch a softball until your fingers bleed, to swing a bat until you've worn a hole through the skin on your knuckles. I mean, that's, that's not something that um, I wasn't prepared for. What um, what really in anything that you, you learn, I think that people struggle with, is just the the mental exhaustion. And a lot of people usually are learning things when they're younger. So once you get older, um, you're not necessarily learning a new skill and learning um, such a, a broad new concept in its entirety. Um, when at that point, it's just you're not doing that as much. So I, I think people don't get used to it or they're they're kind of used to, I guess, having moved beyond that. So when you are in that situation where it's like, all right, forget everything you know and forget all of your instincts and ignore um, your body's natural reflexes because we're going to do the opposite, that mental thing of of having to totally learn that and and – retain that and make sense of it, I think, uh, can be really challenging and to, to just kind of understand all of the nuances. And that's why it takes, um, it takes a lot and it takes a lot of time and it takes the right people and the right opportunities for people to really advance in wrestling because once you think you kind of understand what's going on, then you find out there's a new layer and there's more and there is a different nuance and um, that never stops. It's kind of just every time you you, you get a, a hold and you think you grasp something, then it's like, okay, well, actually, though, there's now there's this. And, um, mm. you know, you, you kind of thought you, oh, okay, I get it now. And it's like, okay, now, so now you got the basic idea. Now we're going to tell you the next step. So um, that's something that just that never stops. Um, and because with my, especially like my sports and everything, I started when I was young, I, I got used to um, just kind of like learning as you go. Uh, I have a, a young woman on my softball team that I help coach with right now who has never played a sport in her life, and she decided to play softball this year her freshman year in high school and I am so proud of her and just admire her so much because as I told her recently all the other girls on the team have had at least 10 years of experience and they've been able to learn all of this over that amount of time and she's trying to catch up with them and learn all of this all at once especially at an older age where you're not used to being in that situation So um, in a lot of ways, that's what wrestling is like, where you're, you know, and and when you come in and and other people have been doing it, you're kind of like, you're the only one that doesn't know what's going on. So it can be intimidating and um, it can really, it just challenges you emotionally and intellectually. Um, And I think that's, to me, 
that that's above the physical stuff because the physical stuff I, I'm used to, um, it doesn't mean it's easy. It just means I, I understand that if I'm going to be involved in something physical, <laughs> that it's going to hurt mm-hmm. and it's going to be hard and it's going to be awkward and I'm going to have major fails. But that's when the learning happens, when, when you fall down and then you figure out why and then you choose to get up instead of give up. And that's where you get better the next time. You don't get better until you screw up and really feel what that feels like and say, I don't want, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to mess that up again. I don't want to um, fall on my face again. I don't want to look goofy or like, I don't know what I'm doing again. Let me fix that. Let me learn how to do that better. So um, I call it growing pains. And, and I think that's such a valuable part of learning. My best um, training sessions have been the ones where I left the most frustrated and emotionally exhausted where I felt like everything I was doing was wrong. But the reason it was wrong or felt wrong was because I was being pushed beyond my current level and I was being asked to do things that were outside of my comfort zone. And I was being asked to do things that I messed up because I don't know how to do it yet. And that's how you learn and that's how you get better and that's how you get more and you get further. Absolutely. They always say that you don't learn from success. So I can certainly agree with you on that. Uh, We don't have a ton of time left, but I do want to touch upon Ring of Honor because that's become your mainstay. And uh, you've just dominated that division ever since you debuted. Um, I really like what they're doing with the whole woman of honor factor. I really think that the women's division is very unique in the personas that they portray on TV and, and wherever else. And I think that the caliber of talent, uh, many of whom we've had on the show before, is just top notch. For fans who are unfamiliar with that product, um, can you explain to them why they should tune in and what really makes the Women of Honor different from any other uh, federation out there? Well, I think that there are definitely there are definitely differences, um, and and. One of the big things to me, and this is important to me in general, is that the aesthetics, while they are part of the business and we recognize that and we acknowledge it, they're not the only part and they're not the main focus for us. So with the Women of Honor, the aesthetics are there, but they are not to replace the skill and the hard work and the determination. They are not... um, they're not to come first. They're they're there, they exist, but it's secondary to everything else. So I think that there have in many companies throughout the years and even in other sports, there have been situations where with certain individuals or certain groups uh, that the aesthetics are first and they can replace the other the other aspects, and when that happens, uh, you're losing out on certain things. And it's important to me to be able to acknowledge that both are very important. Uh, it's something that I've always, since I started wrestling, and had the platform to to reach, especially um, young people and young women in particular is I I want to show everyone that you don't have to choose one or the other. You don't have to choose to be pretty or to be smart or to be sexy or to be strong. You don't have to choose to be uh, cute or to be funny. You don't have to choose one or the other. You can be everything. And uh, some of them can even be one and the same. So that's something that's important to me where it's, there's not a cookie cutter look there's not a cookie cutter person um it, we've got such a, a variety of women we have a variety of ages experience levels um styles sizes shapes um uh, everything and everyone has um a different you know kind of set of traits and characteristics and value so i think that a lot of the women just in general in different companies too, uh, I think you're starting to see that just across wrestling, which I think is amazing because the better every company does and the better every woman does, the better all of us do. When 
women in a different company are successful, that brings positive attention to women's wrestling. People um, start to pay better attention. They start to take what we're doing seriously. They start to really see what we're doing. And then that's when they'll tune in to another company and another woman. When somebody in my division does well, that reflects on our entire division. If somebody does poorly, that reflects on the whole division. So I want everyone to do well. I want women's wrestling to do well because if women's wrestling doesn't do well, we don't have a platform, we don't get matches, we don't have a show, and I don't get to work. So um, Mm -hmm. I think right now it's just an amazing time in wrestling where we're starting to see that it's not men's wrestling and women's wrestling. We're starting to see that it's wrestling, and we're starting to see more women who are being allowed to be athletes and do just their best, not, well, you, you can do this or you can't do that because you're a female wrestler. That's, I know people don't mean this in a derogatory way, but I sometimes get a little upset when people say, oh, you're a female wrestler, and I say, no, I'm a wrestler because I don't mm-hmm. want it to be a separate thing or that there's some sort of limitation or there's something that I can't do that they can do or vice versa. Um, I, I don't, I don't like that. And that's not my goal. So, um, you know, to me, it's we're wrestlers and I, I don't want myself or anyone else to ever think that, well, I'm a female wrestler. So I, I only have to do this much. I don't think that's acceptable at all. And um, Mm -hmm. right now, the reason we're seeing everything explode is because there are so many women who I think have this philosophy and we, we really network with each other. We know who each other are and we support each other and we talk to each other and connect each other um, with others. And, you know, if I, if I meet a, a younger girl who needs experience and I know somebody who lives in her area, I reach out to that person and I say, Hey, this girl, you know, needs somebody to work with to kind of give her, um, you know, show her the ropes and encourage her. And I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, this, this woman needs, needs somebody that can kind of, she can relate to and that can um, give her that encouragement. And that's what I want. I tell all of the, the younger girls and the new, newer girls, I want you to be good because that means all of us have to be better. That makes every one of us better. All of the fans want to see more which opens up more spots for us. That's why you see these all women's companies because the more good women's wrestling that people see and the more they just see it as wrestling, the more they want to see. And the more we get opportunities to not just be a novelty act, but we get to just do what we're doing because we're training just like everybody else is and we're working just like everybody else is. So I do want to give you an opportunity to plug in how people can contact you, uh, how fans can contact you if they just want to, you know, send mail or how promoters can contact you. Um, And I do really appreciate your time. And I do think that you have a very successful career ahead of you. So if you could please plug those in so that fans can be well informed. Uh, Absolutely. So my Twitter is Kelly Klein, W-O-H. So Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, Klein, K-L-E-I-N-W-O-H. Um, people can reach me there. I can also uh, be followed, and you can kind of see what I'm up to on Instagram at Wrestler Kelly Klein. And then my Facebook, because um, Facebook is difficult sometimes, I think, is still facebook.com backslash wrestler mary elizabeth for my main page but i do have a follow page that i think is backslash wrestler kelly klein i believe is the is the actual address but you can um, you can find me at all of those you can send me messages and um you know if if you want to see where i'm going to be just keep an eye on all of those because i try to share the wires i hate to cut you off Um, but we have like five seconds left so i really appreciate your time kelly Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.